Welcome back to Team Castro Universe. We're so excited to have you guys back. We're so pumped about all the attention and comments that you guys are making and suggestions. And we're taking those to heart and implementing them as soon as we can. What a cool episode we have today. So we're excited. We're talking about how to be happy, how to increase happiness into your life, um, or maybe even how to shift into happiness. First, I just wanted to remind everybody that we do have these YouTube videos, but we also have podcasts. So if you want to take this with you and you don't have like YouTube premium or something like that, um, you can download on Apple, Google, uh, or Spotify should be all good to go. Um, so you can take them in your car or wherever you want to go. Then you can listen to them while you're getting ready, uh, make a breakfast, anything like that. Love it. All right, let's get into it. This is a topic that's really interesting. I think especially now where people feel like they're getting into funks um, with a pandemic or just in daily stress of your life. You feel like you have more maybe than you normally do. Social media, people is always focusing on the negatives. I think also just our routines have been so drastically changed. Mm. You know, we're not seeing as much of family as yeah. we may like to. We're not seeing our friends as much as we like to. Uh, things like Zoom fatigue, where we mm. just get so sick of staring at a computer. Um, so talking about how to be happy, I think is just so important. Mm. You know? Yeah, we just had, we were going through this the other day. It's funny that we're talking about it now, but we were feeling a little stuck. Like we we're feeling a little blah, not, we weren't productive. It was like you're laying in bed all day. Um, so we said, hey, let's just get out of the house, right? So we went for a walk. Uh, we went to a hardware store because we're building a house right now. So it was like picking out all the different things and just kind of letting our minds have some exercise um, outside of just the four walls we live in. So uh, we're going to talk about some strategies today, some uh, tips that we can give you guys to start shifting your mind or how to help you become more happy uh, in your life, right? You're, no one's perfect, but we're going to teach you ways that you can increase it. So a few steps here. Number one, we're going to talk about what are you focused on, okay? Linda said this um, just before we started here was it's easy to focus on the negative versus the positive, right? You Absolutely. Would have, totally. Yeah. Um so the basics or the basis to being happy or creating more happiness in our lives is making sure where our attention goes, we're focused on that. Because wherever mm -hmm. our focus goes, our attention goes, that's what we're going to bring about, okay? If you're pessimistic, right, then you're going to get more pessimistic things showing up. If you're optimistic, right, always looking at the good things, then you're going to see the good, Okay. Mm -hmm. Good and bad are just choices. And, you know, we're always talking about, like, especially right now, how the world is going, you know, what's working, what's not working, what's frustrating us, what, what we can be happy and excited about. And I think a lot of that is being consciously aware of what is influencing your environment. Mm. So this is things like, you know, family members. If... If Jason's having an off funky day, I'm likely to also be having an off funky day because that's just the energy in in the environment. Thank goodness that doesn't happen very often. Uh, but things like media, you know, if if you're constantly, you know, watching the news or bombarded with negativity on social media, you know, that's going to have an impact on how you're feeling. And things like associations past experiences that you may or may not be ready to let go of and and your spirituality where you sit with that and and your beliefs mm -hmm. and it, if you always this is a good tip on the side note sidebar if you feel bad about unfriending somebody right there's that nice little unfollow or see less of um, I think that's a great uh, tip as well to help reduce the amount of of things maybe if you're not in line with someone uh, in your community. Remember, our belief system is the guidance system that controls our life. So that kind of rolls into tip number two, and that's your re how to reprogram your belief system to be happy, okay? So like I said before, your belief system is your guidance system of your life, so how whatever your beliefs are, that's gonna 
dictate where you go. So let's talk about how to reprogram that system because it is a program. Just like a computer can be rewritten, our minds are very much similar, right? We already have pre-programmed things going on inside of that. How do we shift that programming? Well, the system, okay, is broken down into steps, okay? I am a system. Our beliefs turn into thoughts, okay? So your belief system turns into how you think, right? Turns into how you feel, right? Whether it's that gut feeling, love, excitement, okay? That creates the action in which we take, okay? And then the actions turn into results. So what physically shows up, okay? So when I said before, remember if you're thinking pessimistic, thinking negative, that's going to filter down through your thoughts and your feelings into the actions that you take are ends up with a typically negative result. Absolutely. Okay. So putting new thoughts in um, can control that where you can now start putting good stuff in, creating good feelings, creating good action, creating good results. Which good results leads to good beliefs and it's just a cycle. Yeah, okay. your, your results enforce press upon your belief system so whatever you see physically is going to re put back in your mind so if all you see is an empty bank account all you think about is how you don't have money your belief system that money's hard to earn boom 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 yeah. right think about it it's a big one and all of that really comes down to the law of attraction and re regardless of how you see it is you know if you're feeling really ugh and down you're you're going to be say more tired mm -hmm. you're going to be less motivated you're going to then be more inclined to do things under that blah vibration whereas if you can raise your vibration raise your excitement raise your happiness mm -hmm. then all of a sudden everything around you just seems more happy you you see more opportunities to be happy you're more engaged to do the things that bring you joy and excitement. Yeah, it almost feels like magic, right? Like, this is where people go, that's kind of hooky, that's kind of funky, because once you start playing in this game, once you start figuring out how your computer works, how your system works, it almost, things just start to happen where you kind of get freaked out a little bit, right? Or you pull back on doing those things because you're like, that was weird, right? Someone made it come to you and said, hey, I'm gonna do business with you, I got a big deal, come out of nowhere, right? magic happens that happens in the high vibration now it is important to note that for many of us the programming or the mindset or the attitude that we hold as a norm uh, we've instilled that belief system into ourselves for 20 30 40 mm. 50 years so you can't just wake up one day well maybe you can <laughs> Some people do, but you know, hey, everything's you, possible. Anything's possible, but to have this expectation that you'll just wake up one day and you'll never think another negative thought in your life is just not realistic. Mm. So you have to, you know, love yourself and give yourself grace as you work to change these beliefs to be more positive, uplifting, and find more joy. It's practice, right? Mm -hmm. Like Linda said, it took 20, 30, 40, 50 years of the same conditioning and program, maybe your family's belief systems, and now you're trying to change that, give yourself grace, it takes time. Um, all right, now you're probably wondering, okay, I get the system, I understand that our thoughts and belief systems become feelings, or then those actions turn into results, and the cycle continues over and over again. Okay, how do I start putting in good things versus bad things? So. Putting in the good is an interesting point. This is number three, is putting in the good. Um, we're gonna give some strategies, things that we've done to help you start making that shift. Yes, so obviously we're gonna go through a few of them here and you have to find the one that resonates or works the most for you. You know, if one of these you're like, that does not make me happy, mm -hmm. don't do it. Yeah, just don't do it. <laughs> just don't do it. Uh, so the first one we have here is meditation. Um, meditation is fantastic. It's it's not just about sitting there and um, it's it's the concept of slowing down your brain, clearing out all of the thoughts and emotions, both good and negative, 
so that you can do a reset to then actively choose the emotion that you're going to feel going forward. Our brains, or at least mine, runs a mile a minute. And when things are going so fast, sometimes it's hard to stop the, the negative thinking that comes up because it's just going by so fast. Yeah. So meditation allows you to clear your mind to then transition into being more positive going forward. Mm -hmm. How often do you think about what you think about? <laughs> right? Think, is, of, think about that. <laughs> yeah, take a moment. Think about that. Uh, the next is gratitude. Uh, this, this really plays into the shifting of the mindset. Uh, I recommend every single morning sitting down and listing three things that you're grateful for right off the bat. You know, this doesn't have to be like over extreme. You know, be grateful that, that you woke up, that, mm -hmm. you know, you got fresh air to breathe and a cozy blanket to wake up in and there's food in the fridge and someone who loves you and you know just be grateful for the things in your life because being grateful is the probably the quickest way to raise your energy mm. and raise your vibration yeah whether you do that mentally or you write it down i find writing it down reinforces the action mm -hmm. re imprints it in the mind better three things and you just get in the habit every morning got a book by the bed what am I grateful for? And, and at first, yes, it takes work, but then eventually it becomes easy or you find things that you really attach to that you are grateful for. That's a great way to imprint that. Absolutely. Uh, the next area is good books and audio. Uh, I'm, I just overall love this. I'm, I'm sure we can see all the books Dude. here behind us. Um, but being in a good book is like hanging out with the author. So finding authors that are inspiring and optimistic or in line with your goals, or if you just truly enjoy leisurely reading, mm. then that's a level of self-care and committing to the things that bring you positive energy and surrounding and shifting your associations to people that are positive, uplifting, making you more happy. 100%. And a little shameless plug, obviously you're doing it right now, right? You're listening to a video. You're listening to an audio on Spotify and Google on Apple. We're just like that, right? Whether you're listening to us or somebody else, these are great things. You can consistently listen to these over and over and over again, which will help you find new things. As your belief systems change, the rules of the game change. Your awareness change. Everything changes. So don't be afraid to read the same book a couple of times. Listen to the same audio a few times, okay? With that, like Linda said, it's like hanging out with that person hanging out with that author, the person who's doing the audio. You're hanging out with us right now. Welcome. We're glad to have you, <laughs> right? But the cool thing is, is the stronger your associations are, the stronger your life is. I think the rule here is the average of the, your life is the average of the top five people you hang out with, whether that's wealth, whether that's relationship, mm -hmm. that's family, that's spirituality, right? Take an inventory of the top five people you spend the most time with and your life is probably pretty similar in terms of the income you make, in terms of the family and everything like that. I, I want to add in the terms of associations too, because you know, you mentioned it up with social media about the idea of like unfollowing people that maybe are not in line with your level of happiness. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think that's important to do with your associations too. Now, obviously we don't get to choose our family. Nope. And we don't get to choose the people that we work with. No. Though I'm really lucky I work with you. <laughs> um, but it's sometimes you need to take care of yourself first by limiting, you know, the time that you spend with certain people. Because mm -hmm. um, it's important for our mental health. And, you know, we all have those people. We're like, you know what? That's a that's a 20 minute person. You know, I could spend 20, you know, like, don't tell them that though. Don't, don't tell them that. But you know, I could spend 20 minutes with these perf with this person before it starts to drain my energy or yeah. people you can spend a day with or people that you can spend a week with or, or so on and so forth. Um, but I think it's important that when it comes to your happiness, that you make that a priority when it comes to your associations. Yeah. You're not discounting that person. You're not saying I don't like that person. You can have lots of love appreciation, joy for that person, but just doesn't mean you need to spend weeks, months with them, every day with them, okay? That includes things like 
media, social media, the news, the radio, okay? Um, just take inventory of how often that is on. Is it a daily routine where you now have negative news all day long or maybe while you're cooking dinner and then family's all watching the news about you know the 90% bad that's happening and then the 10% that's good happening. Um, just take, take some inventory on that. I think it's very interesting to see how that can affect you um, down the road. Okay. There's a difference between being informed about what's happening in the world, understanding what's happening, and then being obsessed about it. Are those things controlling you in your daily routine? And I think if you're here, you understand the difference and you already kind of understand um, the difference of the two. Is it when you watch something, does that get you so fired up it affects the rest of your day? Or do you go, hmm, that was interesting. Thanks for the information. I'm going to now go do this, right? There's a very strict difference between the two. Uh, one of the next biggest things, and I'm just such a big belief believer in this because I've both been physically active and not been physically active. And truth of the matter is when your blood is flowing and your heart's beating and you're using your muscles and you're stretching your limbs, mm. you just feel better. Um, so I'm a huge advocate for having a workout plan or a stretching plan or taking the dog for a walk or taking your spouse for a walk. Um, doing something physically active and moving your body is so, so important. Um, next, adjust your environment. I'm, I'm a big believer that if your environment starts to feel stagnant, switch it up. Whether, now, you don't have to spend money and go buy new throw pillows or a new piece of furniture or change all your bedding mm -hmm. though i'll tell you what sometimes that stuff feels really fresh great. seats oh, feel the best they're amazing but it could be something as simple as you know maybe decluttering a space that you spend a lot of time in mm. right something we've done recently is yeah declutter. if you've never seen the uh, netflix documentary called the minimalist um it's a great documentary it talks about mm -hmm. Are we being intentional with the things that we have or are they just there with attached emotions and holding us down? Yeah. So interesting watch if you're into that. Yeah, definitely definitely take a peek at that. But it is. It's getting rid of the clutter that's stressing you out, maybe tackling that task that you've been putting off forever. It takes that weight off your shoulders. Um, so doing something like that, shifting up your routine. So if your routine starts to feel mundane, mm. add something new switch something up, maybe do something at a different time, just to kind of get those creative energies moving. Uh, I believe that once you're moving in creative energy and you're more in the flow, um, it just feels better. That's yeah. when I'm my happiest is when I'm creating and I'm thinking and I'm visualizing. Um, it just, it's a very natural human feeling. Yeah, it's why we're doing this, mm -hmm. right? To get us creative. Um, and I think fundamentally the biggest thing too is to find balance in your life. You know, especially working from home, it's so easy to just work and work and work and always think about work and you go into the office to do something not work related, but you think of work because you're in there. Um, find that separation in your life. Make time for the things that are important to you. Make time for your relationship. Make time for yourself make time for your physical activity to sit down and have a really good meal because i believe with balance which we all know balance shifts <laughs> um but balance will lead to a more happy life overall yeah i think someone had mentioned it one time to us that balance is like having spinning plates on sticks you ever seen that at like a carnival or something like that well balance isn't always about spinning every plate at the exact same time it's about, hey, I'm gonna get one speeding up, I'm gonna focus there, oh, family's starting to get a little wobbly, focus there, oh, work's a little wobbly, focus that one. It's about balancing them, make sure they're all kind of spinning, but not all at the exact same time, right? Because I think we get misconception on that. Okay, well, that was our main tips, but I wanna leave you with one bonus tip, um, and it's gonna tie into something at the end here, but giving back will give you so much joy and gratification. Reminder, we have the TCU Foundation. This is the ability for you to give back to somebody that you love and cherish, that you think deserves it, 
We're going to have a link down below. Um, if you uh, people on podcasts don't have a link to click on, go to our Instagram. Uh, we have personal ones um, at J Castro underscore Y E G. And Linda, can you remember yours? At Menard Linda underscore. Easy peasy. Oh. <laughs> at Linda Menard underscore. Perfect. So if you find us there, we'll have the link there. Um, or just send us a message, we'll get it for you. But what we're going to do is give away $100 a month every single month this year. We're probably already got one done for the year so far. So um, there's lots out there. Opportunities are great to give back and it makes you feel good if someone you love and cherish gets some money. I love it. Cool. Hey, thanks for joining us on Team Castro Universe Talks. We hope you enjoyed how to become a little bit happier in your life. I hope you feel happier now that you're done here for the day. Uh, please give us a like, a follow, a subscribe, a download, a something, a share, right? Tell your friends about us. <laughs> we just love to have a great community with all you here. So have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. See ya.